Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Good to be here. I thank God for the opportunity to come and worship with you as I also share in the word of God. Thank you so Pastor much. Thank you so much, Mama. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's my second time in Omaha. And uh, I really thank God. I think some of you can remember me. <laughs> um, William Manny, it's my name, as he said. Married to Dorcas, blessed with three children. 25, 22, and 20. It's their age, two daughters and one son. Amen. Wonderful family. I thank God for them. I bring my, my greetings from my dear wife, Dorcas. She said, I greet you in the name of the Lord. Greetings from Vida and Catherine. And uh, they, they are really glad for your help and support. We really thank God for you and your support into the mission work. Um, this morning I came to share in the word as the Lord put in my heart. And uh, I want to pray, then we go straight in the word of God. Father, we thank you. Thank you for who you are, because you're good and your mercy is enduring forever. Thank you, Father, because you love us with an everlasting love. Thank you that, Lord, you have good plans for each one of us. We thank you, Father, that uh, we are growing the knowledge of God, knowing who we are and what we have in Christ, becoming an aroma of Christ on this planet Earth, being productive in every good way, that all the glory and honor comes back to you. You say the man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of your mouth. I pray this morning as we glean from your word, we shall know the truth. We shall grow in it. We shall be doers of your word. And Father, we thank you that our lives will never be the same again. Thank you for the right examples. Thank you, Father, for revelations by the Spirit of God to rightly divide the word of truth. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, um, the Lord put... Uh, a word in my heart to share this morning. Um, I'll be able to say some few things about what we are doing in Congo. Uh, but uh, let, let me go in the word first. Um, this morning, the Lord put in my heart to share with you and remind you of the Great Commission. Amen. The Great Commission. I believe with all my heart that the church today needs to hear this message again and again. Because this is what God wants us to do. And I want to share from the Gospels about the Great Commission. And by the grace of God, I want to help you. I pray that through the Scriptures, I'll be able to stir up your heart to be part of the Great Commission. Wherever you are, you can be part of it. You can do something. You can be a witness. Starting in Jerusalem. Amen. Jerusalem is where the Lord has put you. And uh, I want to share from the gospel as Jesus did because this great as, uh, commission is the assignment that Jesus gave to his church, actually to his disciples, before he ascended back to the Father. And he gave them the assignment to go and make disciples of all nations. And he said, you go make disciples of all nations. And he sent them with a message, a message of hope. We call it good news. Good news to the hearting. 
good news to the lost, good news to the sick. And the end of it all is to make disciples who will be Christ-like. Amen. I want to take you through the Gospels and see the Great Commission in there. And I will be able to uh, share more. In Matthew chapter 28, um, very familiar scripture for all of us. Matthew 28 and verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke. I'm using the New King James Version. Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So when he rose again from the dead, he made a declaration and he told his disciples, he has been given authority. And he gave that authority back to us or back to the church. Yet he also gave an assignment. He said, go ye. He did not say sit ye. He said, go ye. Make disciples. It's, it's, it's a great commission. The assignment is going, reaching out to the lost, spreading the good news to the lost. This is the assignment. He said, go, and he says, go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. God is interested in everyone coming to the knowledge of him. And this is going to be possible if somebody is going to obey the Great Commission to share the good news. This morning I came so that I can encourage you, so that you can value and know that God is counting on you. I have realized that God uses people. Amen. Whenever he wants to do something on planet Earth, he will find somebody he can use. And you know what? Since you are born again, God has chosen you. And he wants to use you. This is something that needs to the church needs to be reminded time and again that you are chosen. Can you say, I'm chosen? I'm chosen, I'm chosen to serve God. I'm chosen to serve God. Amen. Amen. You are chosen to serve God and you are a co-work together with God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, that we are co-laborers together with him. That God wants to use you so that he can be able to fulfill his mission and assignment on planet Earth. In Mark chapter 16, the gospel according to Mark, let's go there. Mark chapter 16 and, and verse 15, Jesus uh, says the same thing. He says, and he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he, he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly, uh, anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Same assignment. He says, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. The gospel is good news. Good news to the sick is that God wants to heal them. Good sick to the sinner is that God wants to forgive them. He loves them and he wants to forgive them. Good news to those who are bound and oppressed by the devils is that Jesus rose again from the dead and he wants them free. And we can use the name of Jesus to cast out devils from them and set them free. So this you see in the Gospel of Matthew, Gospel according to Mark, and also in Luke, he repeats the same thing. I want us to read in the book of Luke chapter 24, just showing you through the Gospel that it is very, very 
uh, uh, it is very evident that God wants us to do something about the great commission, the great assignment that Jesus gave to his church. Chapter 24 and verse 46. Then he said to them, that is it's written, that thus it is necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead and the third day, on the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. And you are witnesses to these things. So he tells them you are witnesses to these things because this gospel has to be preached into all nations. It has to be preached into all nations. In John chapter 15, John 15, 16, he says the same thing. He says, it is him who chose us. He says, John 15, 15, 16. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit may remain. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. I love that. He chose us. He chose you. When I found this, it just thrilled my heart. I'm chosen by God. He saw me and he found a vessel he can use. And I'm ready to be used by God. You are also chosen. And he wants to use you. He wants to use you because you are part of the body of Christ. Well, the body is one but as different members. You are part of the members of the body of Christ. And God wants you to give your supply in doing something, allowing God to use you to do something. This is why we are born again. We are not just born again that we may go to heaven. Heaven is there, but if God wanted us to be born again so that we can make it to heaven, which is good, then after you get born again, you should slip out of the body and go home to be with him. But when he allows us to be here, it is because he wants us to do something. And he wants us to serve. He wants, he wants us to be co-workers together with him. So this great commission is, 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 it is about the believers partnering and working together with God to fulfill what he wants done on earth. And it is the spreading of the good news. It is the spreading of the good news to the world. And therefore, I want to let you know that uh, this is the heart of God. Why is Great Commission so important? Why is it so important for us? Because people want to know, why? Why Great Commission? Why should you be part of it? You see, this is a question I want to answer this morning. Why should we be part of it? Well, number one, because that is the heartbeat of God. It is the will of God. It is the heartbeat of God. If you want to do something that really touches the heart of God, do something about the lost. It is the heartbeat of God. So I want to, I want to obey God. I want to do what pleases him. I want to do what, what thrills his heart. And I found through the scriptures, there is one thing that I know that really touches the heart of God. And it is to see his, the lost coming back to him. The lost being born again. It is his will. It is his heart. And I want to show you through the scriptures because Jesus came us to show. He came down to show us the will of the Father. In John chapter 6 verse 38, he said why he came. I mean, when you want to know the will of God, you just need to look at Jesus. You look at Jesus and then you see the will of God. In John 6 38, he says, I've come down from heaven to do his will. I've come down from, for I have come down from heaven not to do my own will but to the will of him who sent me. That is Jesus. Well, people pray, oh, Lord, how can I know your will? 
I want to serve you. I just want to please you. Well, knowing his will is through his word. His written word and his living word. Jesus Christ is the will of God. So his will is known by looking at Jesus. He said, I did not come to do my will. He came to do the, the will of the Father who sent him. And in John chapter 5 verse 19, he repeated almost the same words, but in a different version. I want us to read that. John chapter 5 verse 19. He says, then Jesus answered and said to them, most assuredly I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. For whatever he does, that is the father, the son also does in like manner. Verse 20. Um, yes. For the father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself does and he will show himself greater works than this that you may marvel. 21. For as the father raises the dead and gives life to them, even the son so gives life to whom he will. Jesus is the express image of our father God. And when we want to know the will of God, we look at Jesus. And Jesus made that declaration in John 3, 16. We know that famous scripture. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes him shall not perish but have an everlasting life. You see, in John 3, 16, Jesus was talking to a Pharisee, Nicodemus, who had come to visit with him at night. And he was, he, was, he, was, he was trying to answer the question, what do I need to do that I may inherit the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus was telling him, you must be born again. You must be born again. And then he went ahead and told him the love of God. He so loved the world that he gave his only one and begotten son, that whoever believes him shall not perish. So the will of God, the will of the Father is revealed through his son that Jesus came so that we, he can save sinners. And this is the assignment we have. We have the assignment to be part of that. We have the assignment to be part of what Jesus came to do to save the lost. I see in the book of, uh, in the book of John chapter 4 verse that one, Jesus with a Samaritan woman, you know, and uh, I want to share this with you. In John chapter 4 verse that one, he comes here and uh, he sits at the well of ja uh, Jacob and this woman is there drawing some water and you know, there was no dealings between the, the Jews and the Samaritans and Jesus seated there he kind of felt he needed to talk to this woman. And uh, the disciples left to go and look to buy food. And Jesus seated there. After he has witnessed and talked to this woman, and this woman has believed that he is the Messiah. And she's now running to, the, to Samaria that she, she may also spread the good news. Come and see a man who has taught me all that I have ever done, the disciples comes and they say, Rabbi, eat. And I want you to observe what Jesus answered them in verse 32. Jesus said, but he said unto them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Therefore the disciples say to one another, as anyone brought him food, anything to eat. They thought somebody gave him food. But he said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. In other words, you see, food is to bring satisfaction to the body. And Jesus was telling them, what gives me satisfaction is to do the will of my father. I pray we as a church will come to a point where our satisfaction comes not only from the food that we eat for our physical bodies, not another thing, but also to do the will of the Father. 
He said, my food is to do the will of the Father. In other words, Jesus was so, uh, so fulfilled to see this Samaritan woman being able to believe he is the Messiah. And now going out there to share the testimony and to tell her story about how he met Jesus. And you know, through her story, Samaria, Samaria came to Jesus. Big part of them, the village came to Jesus. And they believed in him because of our testimony and because of what Jesus taught. My brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you this morning. Be part of the assignment. And you, if you are already part of the assignment, keep doing it. It is the right thing to do. It is the right. That's where we get that the crown, the crown, the reward, the blessing, the fulfillment on this planet earth. Doing the will, of, the will of God is so satisfying. I've been preaching the gospel for quite a while now. 24 years being a pastor. And now God uh, spoke to me to move to Congo. And let me tell you something. One thing I have ever found. Being in ministry is not easy. Preaching the gospel and doing, uh, going here and there. Sometimes going to very tough areas. But let me tell you something. After it all. The fulfillment that comes with it. The fulfillment. Knowing that you have done the will of the Father. Knowing that you have done the will of the Father and the right thing. And it just brings that fulfillment. You feel so fulfilled. You, so, you feel so good. Because it is the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do. No wonder Jesus said that I have food that you know about. No, nothing about. And he said, lift your eyes and see. The harvest is white. The harvest is white. The harvest is white. He said in Matthew chapter 9 verse 37, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. The harvest is never the problem. It is never the problem. I mean, in Kenya, we have been able Every time because the Lord called me to preach the gospel. First of all, he put me in Mombasa. Mombasa being an Islamic uh, uh, town. And we had a lot of resistance when we started. It was almost uh, difficult to preach in that place. But we knew the Lord had sent us to Mombasa to share the good news to the people. And, and I remember when we started, the uh, first time we, we did uh, an open air to preach the gospel, uh, just in the open air uh, crusade and, and, and let preach the gospel to the people. The Muslims, they came out of the mosque. And these youth, about 30 of them, they just ran about against us, shouting, Takbir, Takbir, Takbir. They are saying it's holy war, holy war. So I was standing there preaching and they come and surround us. And they were shouting, stone him, stone him, burn the, uh, the sound system. And I did not know what to do. I did not know what to do. Some of the people who were with us, they ran away. And there we were, surrounded by this youth. And they are shouting and they are holding stones. And the Spirit of God told me, just pray in the Spirit. I started praying in tongues. And I saw this youth started dropping their stones and just going back and they just walked away they walked away that was a sign to the congregation those who are watching at us and they says your God is great if these Muslims have spared you we need your God that was our how we penetrated that down and Jesus was lifted and Jesus drew men to himself. Hallelujah. Was it easy to the flesh? No. Was it easy to my mind? No. The mind was shouting. And let me tell you something. After it all, we see the church in Kanamai. That is the place. Mombasa. We saw other churches coming up. And the place now is revived. We have several churches. We have people who believe in God. And, and we thank God. That brings satisfaction. Knowing 
that the light of the gospel has entered into that town. And by the preaching of the word, people were liberated. I remember one time I was praying early in the morning in the church and there come uh, a Muslim man and he peeped through the window uh, and he shouted at me and called in Swahili, Mahalim, he's calling, teacher, teacher, can you stop praying? I want to talk to you. So I told him, let me finish, then I'll come and talk to you. He said, okay. So he sat out there. And when he, I went, after finishing prayer, he taught me, have been sent to you. I said, by who? He said, we are a group of people. And I knew he was a witch. Uh, I, I, I know it's not a really people in, in, uh, in America don't know much about witchcraft and so on and so forth. <laughs> But uh, in Africa, it's so real. I mean, it, it, even here. We, it was a witch. And there were a group of witches. They used to meet every Thursday in the center of that town. And do their meetings. They are uh, put dressing in red and going round. And that's why businesses could not grow. Nothing could grow in that. When you start your business, it did not grow. It did not do well. And this man said, I've been sent to you. I said, by who? He said, we are many. Okay, what is the message? He said, I've been sent to ask you to stop this, your prayers. I said, why? He said, because since you started praying these kind of prayers, we do not sleep, our children don't sleep, we are disturbed and we want you to stop. And I knew I was dealing with something here. So he said, are you going to stop your prayers or not? He said, I said, okay, I pray to fellowship with God. I also pray for the city. I cannot stop. He said, okay, we will see. And then he walked away. That is how, when I knew that when we pray according to the word of God, you may not see something in the physical right away, but in the spiritual world, you are impacting something. You are impacting, you are making an impact. Praying the word of God. Praying by the authority that is given to you. And you know what? They decided to leave that city. All the witches. Only two were left. The, the, the leader of the witches was left. And he became so sick. So sick. They tried to take him to a witch doctor. Uh, but he could not get well. So his family members said, We have heard of this pastor in this church. Why don't you call him to pray for you? Because if he can pray for you and leave, that's even better. He said, okay, call him to come and pray for me. So they came for us. We go to his house. We find him laying there. He cannot rise. He cannot sit. And I go and ask him, did you send for us? He said, yes. What do you want? I want you to pray for me to get well. I said, I'm going to pray for you, but in the name of Jesus. He said, I don't care. <laughs> All what I need is prayer. <laughs> so, and you know what? I, I, when, when I laid my hands on him, I recognized there was a demon in him. And therefore, I, I took authority in the name of Jesus. As God tells us, you shall cast out devils. I commanded you demon spirit come out of him and he screamed and that thing left. He jumped out of the bed. He stood and started walking. The whole family started shouting Jesus, 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 Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Good news just came to him. God loves you. He wants to heal you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to save you. That is how we got the witch doctor who was the leader. He got born again. He gave up all his witchcraft stuff. We burned them and we started home sale in his house. Amen. Hallelujah. We started a home sale in his house. And his family believed in Jesus. Even today he is a member of our church. Doing very well. Back in Mombasa. 
When the other one who was remaining had that, he ran away. He went to another city. <laughs> From that time on, revival hit that town. Revival. Why am I sharing this to you? I'm sharing this to you to tell you what. It is the spreading of the good news that is the answer to many problems that we are seeing. People are waiting for somebody who can share the good news. People are waiting for somebody who can go and tell them about the love of God. Who can tell them about the resurrected Savior. Who can tell them about the, the God who is able to set them free from an oppression. People are tired. They are tired of their sins. They are tired of their sicknesses. They are tired of their burdens. But good news is what gives them hope. Hallelujah. And that is what we have been doing. And this is what, I, what I'm encouraging us. I know you've been doing that here. I'm just encouraging you to keep doing what you've been doing. Hallelujah. Because it's a solution. It is, it is the assignment that has been given unto us. He said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. He said that. And he said, then you will be my witnesses. That's Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You shall be my witnesses. Power to become witnesses. Power to do something. You see, I've seen in parts of Africa and Kenya, people want the power. But they want the power just for sure. I'm powerful. Boy, I'm full of that power. No, he said that power is that we may be witnesses to him. We may be witnesses for him. Starting where we are at. Starting where we are at. I remember when God started doing things in Kanamai and it put my heart to do what we call mapping. He said, take up a map of this area. Count the houses in this area. I want you to witness in every house in this area. So we took the map of that area and we kind of marked the houses in blocks. I know it's different in America. Maybe walking in somebody's house like that is a different way of doing things in Africa. You can just go and knock doors and people will open for you and you share the gospel. And we, we decided to share the gospel in every house. Every house. We counted houses and we went and witnessed to block A, block B, Block C, block D, like that. Just to make sure that nobody in that, our Jerusalem, will say, I've never heard. I've never heard. Because I wanted us to obey what is said. Be my witnesses, starting in Jerusalem. Start with your neighbor. Start with your workmate. Start with your friend. Start where you are at. You can be a witness for him. Hallelujah. And I remember time and time again putting banners in our church. Did you witness to somebody this week? Did you witness to somebody? Just one soul. Just one person. Share the gospel with them. That's where you can start. Why? Because God expects us to obey the great commission. It is the grace assignment that he has given unto us. It is his will that people be born again. It is his will that no, none of them will be lost. Why is it so important? It is his heartbeat. Why it is so important? It is because that is the only way we can hasten the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew 24, 20, 14, what did he say? Matthew 4, 24, 14, he said, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world to all the nations as a witness. Then the end shall come. Then the end shall come. You know, he was answering to a question that the disciples asked him. What will be the sign of the end of the world? He said, you hear rumors of war. You hear rumors of war. But those are only beginnings of sorrows. What will be the sign of the end of the age? When the gospel is preached 
into the all the world, to all the nations, as a witness. As a witness. That gives me passion to go where the gospel has not been preached. Reaching the unreached. I have a passion for that. Because I want to obey God. Having done Jerusalem, I want to go to Judea. I want to go to Samaria. I want to go to the uttermost parts of the world. I remember this time when God told me, take the gospel to the border of Somali. And then I spoke to the church in Mombasa. I said, we are going to preach the border to the border of Somalia. And then we, we organized a team. And we were going there for a mission. I remember when I came to a place called Kitui, close, uh, the, the, the security could not allow us to go alone. They said, we, we know where you are going. We don't let you go alone. We want to give, they gave us seven soldiers to accompany us. And we were there for three days preaching the gospel. What amazed me is we met this 57-year-old man that is in Kenya, the board of Somalia, who said he has never heard the name Jesus. And we say Kenya is 85% Christian. Yet at the border of Somalia, there is a man, 57 years old, he has never heard the name Jesus. It has moved my heart and says, surely somebody needs to obey. Surely somebody has to go. And you can start where you are at. You don't have to go to the borders for a beginning. Start with your neighbor. Start with your friend. Start with your family members. Share the gospel with them. Amen. God is counting on you. God is counting on me. Hallelujah. You can share the gospel to hasten the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Second Peter 3, 9. God says he is patient and not willing that any should perish. He is patient. Why has it taken so long for Jesus to come back? Because God is patient. He wants the last fruit. He is not willing for any to perish. That's good news. He wants everyone to hear the gospel. We will preach to our neighbors, to our friends, to our relatives, and also going where the gospel has not been preached. I thank God. We have people now going to Iraq. We have people going to those areas that the gospel had not been preached. He says he does not want any to perish. He doesn't want any to perish. In Congo, last year, I was somewhere called Beni. And while I was there, because in Congo there is a lot of unrest, a lot of killings because of the rebel group they call the M23. And what they are doing is killing people and cry, trying to create fear, chasing people from their farms. They come to a village and they kill several people, take pictures and spread. So that's how we lost this pastor. Uh, this pastor, uh, just after doing a devotion, uh, seven o'clock with his family, and they knock. They knocked and come, and they, they killed him before his children. Then they took the mother also. They killed the mummy before the children. That was very painful. And they left the kids there. That day, they killed 30 people in that village. And they walked away. So we have this group of people called the Pygmy family. They are, they are short. They, they are uh, the Pygmy family in, in Congo. They live in the forest. They eat from the forest. And uh, therefore, this, these rebels came and found the Pigim family in the forest, and they killed 48 of them. Then they ran and came close to the Beni, where they found a place 
to hide. And in that camp, when I was told we have this group of pygmies in there, I wanted to go and visit and talk to them and give them hope because when you hear people have gone through these tough experiences, what they need is good news. What they need is what? Good news. They need to be given hope. They're given to be encouraged. They need to be, they, they need to be told God still loves them and you have a wonderful plan for their lives. So I go to this big family and I start talking to them. They welcome me. I start talking to them and preaching to them. And while I was talking to them, I said, God so loved us that he sent his son who died because of us, because of our sins. And I told them, Jesus died because of your sins. I remember the chief, the leader, raising up his hand in the midst of my preaching and saying, that, that cannot be true. That cannot be true. That cannot be true. I said, what are you saying? He said, no, we will not accept that because he got me wrong. We will not accept that. He said, what? He said, you people living in town and in the city, you cannot kill someone and blame that on us. If you kill that man called Jesus, you cannot blame that on us. <laughs> you see, they got the message wrong. They thought Jesus is someone who has been killed in town and now we are trying to put that blame on them. That's why I understood. These people have no idea who Jesus is. They think he's somebody and now we are trying to blame them and we are trying to put the government against them. Then I had to close my message there and say, okay, uh, I'm going to give some food because I found that they needed some food. I'm going to help with some food. I'll come back tomorrow. So I talked to the, to the leader and also to the pastor who was close just to know why. Why did I not have a breakthrough in this? He said, because you used that approach. They don't know who Jesus is. You need to change that. Talk to them and bring that message in a covenant way. They understand covenants more than anything else. And when you talk about God making a covenant with humanity, it will be easier. That's what I did. And the next day, we get all of them believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's why I realized, well, you might be thinking that Jesus is known everywhere. There are areas, there are places they have not heard about Jesus. And there are areas you have really to know how to present the gospel. You cannot do it the way you do it in America. You cannot do it the way you do it in Kenya. In some groups of people, they have not heard who Jesus is. And I said, truly, we need to measure on preaching the gospel. We can preach where we are at and we can preach to the unreached areas and to the unreached communities. In one part of Congo, we had so much resistance even going into that place. And those who were waiting for us, there was kind of confusion that we were not allowed to come in to that area. And the Spirit of God witnessed to me, he said, take authority and speak by the authority given unto you. Bind every forces and command that you shall find favor in this place. And God, so like that, opened the door. The man who is in charge of that uh, province, he knew that we were there and we were guests, and he, he said, I'm going to help you. And I'm going to talk to the people. And I'm going to introduce you to the town. That's how we got favor. and We were able to minister to that area. We have an assignment. 
There is a lot to do. There is a lot to do. In Congo right now, the good news is not just about preaching about salvation. It's also giving people hope. Because this is a place where people are so hard. People have been so hard. The killings, the raping, women raped, children watching their parents being murdered before them. And the pastors who are ministering to these hurting people are also so discouraged. We have several churches closed in some area of Congo. And I was talking to one of these pastors who lost 13 members of his church in one day. He just killed them. And he has to close the church and relocate to another town. Him and his wife. His wife escaped narrowly. And you know what? We come to this area and we have the gospel of salvation and also a gospel of hope. Amen. Amen. And telling them that Jesus is the only peace and he is the only hope of glory. When you have Jesus Christ, he is our peace. And you know, we are teaching them to believe God even for Psalms 91. That a thousand may fall on your, uh, on your side and ten thousand on your other side, but evil shall not come near you. You come. You see, you can believe God for protection. You can believe God. And this is what we are telling them. God is able to keep you and to watch over you. And we are teaching them to pray correctly for the peace of Congo. Because the Bible says that you pray for the peace of the city where God has put you. That by its peace, you will have your peace. So we believe what? God is healing Congo. God is restoring Congo. And that's the good news we are telling them. We are preaching in three radio stations. Each radio station is reaching about one million people. And what we are giving the people of Congo is hope. God loves you. God has a good plan for you. God is healing this nation. And this, what you are experiencing right now, will be a thing of the past. And you testify the goodness of the Lord. So we have seen these pastors get courage, be strengthened, and get ready to go back and preach Christ again in those areas. We are called to preach. We are called to preach in season and out of season. We are called to share the gospel in season and out of season. You remember, there is a cost of one soul. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 8, verse 36, what will a man what will a man benefit if he loses his soul? If you can gain the whole world and lose your soul, Jesus said it's a loss. It's a loss. So nothing can compare with the soul of a man. That's why we need to witness. Because God values so much a soul of one man. And he cannot compare it to the whole world put together. He said silver and gold in in. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, he said, you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold, but you are redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus. When you have a hundred sheep, he said, and you lose the 99, he said, you lose one, you leave the 99 to look for the one that is lost. That's how valuable a so it is. That's why we need to put our effort in witnessing and reaching out to the lost. The cry of the dead. You remember the rich, the rich man and Lazarus in Luke chapter 16. This, this rich man, the Bible says when he died, he went to the hates. And while he was there in verse 27, the Bible says he was tormented. Why should you witness? Because we are so compassionate about the lost. If they die today, where will they go? That place of torment. Even the rich man, when he was tormented there, he made a plea to Abraham. He said, Father Abraham, I plead with you. Let Lazarus go and preach to my brothers. I have five brothers. They don't pay no attention to the gospel. I don't want them to come here in a place of torment. 
I read this scripture and I said, Lord, I don't want any of my family members to go to that place of torment. I don't want any of my friends to go to that place of torment. I don't want to go to, to see any of your people that you created in your own image go in there. I want to be a witness to tell them you love them. And when they believe in Jesus, they will have life and life in abundance. Hallelujah. So, Paul said to the church at Ephesus, I have preached the full gospel to you, and therefore I am innocent of your blood. I'm innocent, I'm innocent of the blood of any one of you. That is what he is telling them, I've been able to do all what I can do. And I leave it to God, and I leave it to you. We need to witness. We need to let people know God loves them. How is this possible? How are we going to do it? Because as I finish, I need to tell you how you can do it. You see, people, people have heard the gospel about the Great Commission. People heard the, that God wants us to obey the Great Commission, but they do not know how. I want to share to you, how can you be part of the Great Commission? How can you obey? Well, number one, you can do that by praying for the laborers to be sent to the harvest field. You see, you can do something. You don't have to go to Congo like me. <laughs> Neither do you have to go to Somalia. You can do it at your level. Pray for the Lord of Harvest to send laborers into the harvest. You know you can do that from Homer. And God can find somebody to send to the unreached areas because of your prayer. Yes. 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 You know he hears your prayer. He hears your prayer. And by you praying correctly, praying according to the word of God, God is able to send somebody, to send somebody to the unreached parts of the world and he can send somebody even to your loved ones. You see, sometimes you witness to your loved ones and because they are so used to you, they say, what can you tell us? We know you. Well, thank God you know me, but I know the Father and I will talk to my Father and he will send a laborer to you. You will send a laborer. You will send somebody who can talk to you. You will send somebody who can share the gospel. That is in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to 38. You see Jesus say, the Bible says when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with the compassion. We need to have this compassion for the lost. Well, if they die today, what will happen to them? What will happen to them? You see, that's the difference between the Samaritan, the good Samaritan, and the priest and the Levite. The priest and the Levite asked the wrong question. They asked, if I help this man, what will happen to me? That's what they ask. And sometimes we are so nervous and afraid of going to approach people and talk to them about Jesus because what will happen to me? I don't, look, I don't want to look like I'm judging anybody. I don't want to go there. I don't want to... Well, what will happen to me? But the Samaritan... Good Samaritan asked a different question. If I don't help this man, what will happen to him? What will happen to him? And if you don't share the gospel with that man, what will happen to them? If nobody reaches out to them, to your brother, to your sister, to your friend, to your loved one, what will happen to them should be the question. And this will build a compassion in our hearts that we can be able to pray. At least pray. Oh Father, you say the harvest is plenty but the laborers are few. I ask you to send your laborers into the harvest. He is able to do that. So you can be part of this by praying for laborers. Number two, how can you be part of the great commission? You can be part of the Great Commission by you 
being the laborer. The first one, you pray for the laborers. The second one, you choose to avail yourself to be the laborer. Lord, you say like Isaiah, here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. Give me the word to share. Give me the how to share. Give me the favor. Let my voice be heard that you speaking through me. And you can be a witness. Yes, you can be a witness. You say, oh, pastor, I don't have, know many scriptures because that's, the, because that's the reason so many people give. They say, I am not conversant with scripture. How can I share the gospel? Well, the Samaritan woman did not know scripture. She didn't know no scripture. Yet, she witnessed to Samaria. How did she do that? She simply told her story. You can tell your story and be a witness. Tell your story. Hallelujah. You have a story. What is your story? Your life before you met Christ. And how you met Christ. And your life after you met Christ. It's simple. I've won so many people to Christ by witnessing, sharing my, my personal testimony, my story. And I tell them, before I met Christ, I was working in a pub. I was selling and I was drinking and I was so caught up in that and my life was messed because I was a drunkard. They look at me and say, you preacher? Drunkard? Yes. The Lord had mercy on me. One day I heard the good news being preached that he is able to deliver me and he is able to forgive me. And I believed in that message. And I gave my life to Jesus. And from that moment, I became born again. I became a new creature and my life changed. Since that time, the bondage that I was in, I was delivered and free and free indeed. And I tell them that Jesus who forgave me, who delivered me, who made me a new creature, he is so loving, he can do it to you. That's a story. No scripture, my story before, how I met Christ, my life after I met Christ. How else can you be able to be a witness? Because if you look at uh, Paul, he used his story also in Galatians, Galatians chapter 1 verse 13. He says, you know my way of life, that is Paul. I used to persecute the church, he said. But God had mercy on me. Paul standing before King Agrippa, he said, I'm here because of the witness that on my way to Damascus, I met with Christ. I was going to persecute the church. That is his story. And then he asked King Agrippa, do you believe in the prophets? Then he, King Agrippa says, you think in such a few minutes you can make me a Christian? And he says, whether in a short time or a long time, I wish every one of you were like me without the chains. Every opportunity you can share the gospel using your story. Hallelujah. You can share using your story. And you can share the gospel number three. Using telling Jesus' story. Tell Jesus' story. If you cannot tell your story, tell Jesus' story. By telling Jesus' story, you present the love of God to people. That God loves you. He loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. Yes. And Jesus died on the cross on our behalf. And for that day, he rose again from the dead. This is what Peter is doing in Acts chapter 4 from verse 7 to verse 12. When they brought him before the leaders and asked, by what power, in whose name is this man been healed? He said, by the name of Jesus, whom you crucified, 
whom God raised. That is Jesus' story. Whom God raised from the dead. This man, by faith in that name, this man stands before you. For there is no other name, he said. There is no other name that man must be saved by. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Tell Jesus' story. Tell the love of God. Tell Jesus that he died for our sins and tell that he rose again from the dead for our righteousness and give people opportunity to believe and accept the free gift of God. You see, you can do it. You can tell Jesus' story. Number four, you can send someone who has that assignment to go and preach the gospel? I thank God. This church is known for that. You've been doing that. You've been partnering with Safari Mission and helping Safari Mission to reach out East Africa. That was what we are doing in Congo. Some of you praying for us. Some of you supporting us. You're doing the right thing. Keep doing that. Not only to Safari Mission, but wherever the Lord leads your heart. Because there are many other laborers who are doing great jobs around the world. Hallelujah. So find somebody you can support. Some Find a mission you can support. Find a minister that is doing great work, reaching the unreached, and be part of them. Help them to do what God has called them to do. By you helping them, you are counted in it. Hallelujah. Because Paul said, in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then he begins to ask questions. How can he call upon him who he has not believed? It's a question. How can they believe without having heart? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can the preacher go without being sent? Because the Bible says how beautiful are the feet that the good news of peace. Hallelujah. You can be the sender. You can be the sender. You can use what God has put you over as a stewardship and become a good steward and, and tell God part of what my business does will be to partner and take the gospel the outermost parts of the world. I mean, I saw your pastor come into Kenya not once with a team for a mission. That's a good place to sow and enable him go. It's a good place to pray that those laborers going will connect with the people and that they will be able to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. This gospel needs that every one of us should be able to do something. The hearing is not enough. I want to encourage us. Be a doer. Be a doer. Be a doer. Believe in the assignment. Believe it is God's will. Take the right action. What can you do? Pray for laborers. What can you do? Be the laborer. How? Witness. How can you witness? Tell your story. How else can you witness? Tell Jesus' story. Hallelujah. How can you else do that? Send someone. Send someone. By that, I want to conclude by saying, you are chosen. You are chosen. Can you raise up your hand and say, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. Say, God has chosen, me God has chosen me to be a co-worker together with him. I will be a witness for the gospel. I will do it in my capacity. I will be obedient by the grace of God and I will hasten the second coming of my Lord. Stand up on your feet.
Thank you so much. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Nothing can stop us from doing what God wants us to do. Nothing can stop us from obeying God. Nothing can stop us from being a part of the great commission. And you know what? The reward is great. When all is done, we want to say like Paul, I have fought a good fight. Hallelujah. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And now, the crown of righteousness awaits for me. There is a crown. We are not here forever. We are here for a season. We can take nothing up with us. No houses, no money, nothing. But the source, the source we touched, the source we touched while we were here. I want to pray with you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Take a moment and before I pray for you, I want you to pray for laborers. Ask God to send laborers. Oh yes, let's begin by that. Oh yes, pray that God may send laborers into his harvest because the harvest is truly plenteous. But the laborers are few. That God may send his laborers into the harvest and that Father may be able to send people to reach out to the unreached. Even your friends, even our family members. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you that we are co-workers together with you. Thank you, Father, you called us. You've chosen us. Thank you, Father, that the great is the harvest, but the laborers are few. We thank you because you said we can pray and you will send laborers into the field, into the harvest, and they will bring in the harvest, oh God. Therefore, Father, this, this morning we pray in the name of Jesus that you may send laborers into your field, that you may send laborers to the unreached areas, the people that have gone hard, the gospel, Father, that you send your laborers in there with a message of hope with a message of salvation, with a message of life. Uh, and Father, that you're going to transform lives, uh, that people will come out of darkness into light. People will come uh, and cross from, from, from darkness into life uh, because this is your will. We thank you, Father. We thank you that we will be part of this uh, as we see souls and people being reached uh, by the word of God because laborers are going out. Uh, oh, yes, uh, going out to minister to people with the good news, uh, with the good news of the kingdom and we thank you for great harvest that is coming in great harvest that is coming in to the glory of your name from our families we see our family members our loved ones our friends coming to know you Lord and being transformed by the power of your glory by being made new creatures in Christ hallelujah glory be to God Lift those beautiful hands towards heaven. I want to bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name. I want to thank you, Father, this morning for your, uh, for, for every one of us who have heard this gospel message. And I pray, oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we are going to be doers of the word and not forgetful hearers. That from today, every one of us will go and sit down and say, Father, how can I do this? How can I, how do you want me to do it? And Father, each one of us will find their place to give supply in the body of Christ concerning the great harvest. I thank you, Father, that each one of us will find their place to obey the great commission, O oh God. Some of them praying for the harvest, praying for the, for, the, for the laborers to go forth. Some of us being part of that and witnessing. Some of us, Lord, being able to give and send the, the, the missionaries and send those who have a burden to go into the outermost parts, O oh Lord. And we thank you, Father, by each one one of us giving their supply, we will see the harvest come to you and we thank you that we will see the hastening of our second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for Jubilee Church. As a family, Lord, I pray that this church will continue to obey the great commission in different levels as you help them, oh God. Thank you, Father, they have been doing so. I pray the grace will be multiplied for them, that Lord, they will continually be faithful in doing so because this is what we are called to do. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. And somebody said, Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.